I want him to be in the midst of the prayers that we pray. You know, some people, and it's easy to, to pray amiss. It's easy to pray in vain. It's easy to pray repetitiously, the same prayers over and over. But if we're not careful sometimes, those prayers will not have really meaning or meet with them. But when we pray effective, we pray fervently to the Lord. I'm not saying it's how loud we pray. It's not how long we pray. It's the fervency of our prayers. I want to use another word. It's the intimacy of our prayers and who we're praying to. I can pray to you all day, all night, and never receive nothing. But I can pray to my Father, which is in heaven, and I can receive from the throne of God. I want to deal once a night, once again tonight, using the topic uh, that I went on the last two Wednesday nights, how to pray in the will of God. I didn't say how to pray the will of God, but how to pray in the will of God. There is a difference. Sometimes when we pray the will of God, amen, the difference there is, Lord, I want your will, but uh, Lord, sometimes if we're not careful, we'll be actually praying our will. But when we get to the place that, Lord, when we're praying in his will, not my will, but thy will be done, Lord. When we get into that realm of prayer with the Lord, amen, it takes on sometimes another level. And I'm going to go there tonight, amen, about praying in the Spirit, amen. Um, there's a lot of controversy concerning praying in the Spirit. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I've even seen TV evangelists tell a whole congregations of thousands of people, okay, everybody get in your prayer tongue and start praying in tongues. I'm afraid it doesn't quite work like that. I understand in one sense what he's saying, what he may be implying. But I will give you some scriptures tonight to help us to understand what praying in the Spirit really is. I don't want to confuse you, so stay with me tonight as I hopefully by the help of the Lord prayerfully be able to break it down. I want to read these two scriptures tonight. Here it goes in Romans chapter 8. Beginning at verse 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The word infirmities here is mean, meaning weaknesses, not just necessarily sicknesses, but weaknesses. How many know tonight that there are times that we are even weak in the Spirit? I mean, there's something right now. You may be here, and you may be a super Christian and say, Well, I'm not never that place. Well, See me after church where I can find out exactly how you do that. Because there are times, amen, that my flesh man becomes stronger than my spirit man. What must I do? I must begin to pray in the spirit that the spirit man will subdue the flesh man. There's times I don't want to pray. What do you mean? Oh, in my mind, in my spirit, I know I need to pray. I desire to pray. But the flesh man sometimes is a little stronger. It shouldn't be, but there's times, and you know it just as good as I do, there's times you know you need to pray when you go and you do something else. When the Spirit of the Lord is prompting us at times. Now, if you've reached that place of obedience, see me after church, that you never disappoint God and you always, when he says do something, you immediately do it because I haven't reached that level 100% yet. I know there's some folks think they're there, amen. But the Spirit also helpeth our weaknesses. For we, listen to this, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. You remember, Mama said, this is what you ought to do. But there are times the Word of God says, for we don't even know how to pray for as we ought to pray. But the Spirit, and I'm going to get into that tonight, the Spirit itself, it maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've been there more than one time and will probably be there again and again. Matter of fact, it ought to be a daily thing with the same man. In verse 27, he goes on, he said, And the Spirit, he that searches the hearts, knoweth what is the mind. Listen to the wording, the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for who? The saints according to what? The will of God. Now, the verse previously said there are times we don't even know how we ought to pray. And that's why the spirit intercedes. God's spirit, let me clarify. 
God's Spirit intercedes in us. Amen. Father God, as we approach the throne of God once again tonight, we're thankful to be in your house. We're thankful to be in the house of God where the Spirit of the Lord is. And Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, O oh God. I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me, God, to your people tonight, Lord. And uh, oh, dear God, help me to tell them about something, God, according to your word uh, that I have experienced, Stephen, in myself. It's not something I read uh, behind someone else. But Lord, when we're in those places uh, that the Spirit begins to intercede through us, uh, amen, and call on the Father for us uh, in our behalf, oh God, help us to realize uh, there is a realm that we can get into. And if we are a child of God, uh, there are times in our life we're going to have to pray in the Spirit uh, because we are in a, even a spiritual warfare. Uh, Lord, give us clarity of your word tonight and help us to be uh, and to desire to be more like you in Jesus' holy name. And the church said, Amen and amen. Hallelujah. When praying in the will of God, we may find ourselves uh, many times as a child of God praying in the Spirit. Amen. I want to explain that for just a little bit. Amen. Now, there are times, amen. Now, first of all, let me say this. If you're a child of God, amen, the Spirit of God is dwelling within you. Amen. And there are times, many times, I think I may a statement on last week. Uh, there are times that some people never get into this realm of praying, of praying in the Spirit. Uh, but I want to tell you, most time you see people when they are praying, I said most time, uh, not all the time, but there are many times that people when they get into that urgency, uh, that place of praying in the Spirit of God. Uh, amen. I can remember some of the first times I ever prayed in the Spirit. Uh, amen. I, I, I want to clarify something else. Now, when I say praying in the Spirit, uh, I'm not just talking about praying in tongues. There are times uh, that we do pray in tongues, and it's the Spirit of God praying through us. Uh, there are other times, amen, when there is a lack of words or a lack of language, uh, amen, when we are in under an intense burden or, uh, or we feel intense pressure or there is a crisis in our lives. Uh, and we've done prayed everything we know to pray and how we know to pray. I mean, we're at that place fervently. We've done prayed out, so to speak. And we've done, we've done petition God with everything we know how to say. But then we reach that place in the spirit realm. Amen. That the spirit of God within us begins to groan in us. And he begins to pray and intercede in our behalf. Pastor, what do I need to do at that point? Just let go and let God. Because the spirit is trying to pray through you. I want to try to break this down. Maybe I won't confuse you here. Uh, but you see there's, a, I, I, and I don't want to confuse you with what I'm fixing to say, but uh, you see uh, there's times that we pray with our senses. Uh, we pray with our mind. Come on. There's times that uh, I know what I want to pray for at times. I call people's name when I, I want to pray a certain way and pray for certain things. Uh, and then there's some situations, Lord, that I uh, all I can do is bring them to you, but boy, I feel a heaven I feel a wooing of the spirit, if you will, and it and it takes me into a different realm, amen. And and I mean, brother Gene, these times I don't even know how to petition God in a certain matter, but my heart is heavy, and I'm done past my intellect. I'm done past my mind. But you see, the spirit of God that liveth within us, hallelujah, it begins to pray through us with groanings and utterances that we know not. And here's what is happening. Can I tell you, when you reach that place in the realm of the Spirit and praying, then the rest of your body, hallelujah, the rest of the senses, they begin to line up with the Spirit of God that is within us. Brother Buddy, I know, hallelujah, I know there's been times right over there on Sylvester Drive, at that sitting at that kitchen table, or in your house praying, that the Spirit of God has come upon you and you begin to groan and pray in the Spirit so 
heavy labored, so heavy laden. Oh, the word of God says if we are heavy laden, we're to cast our cares upon him. This is another form of getting in that place in the spirit and letting the spirit of God begin to intercede through us. I've been in the place, amen, where that I got down to pray and I began to speak in tongues, amen. But it was different. It was a prayer language, amen. What was taking place? Well, it's kind of like Sister Angie said, when I was hunting me a wife, she said, the Lord knows you didn't have enough sense to find one on your own. So he sent you somebody right in the church where you was preaching. And you didn't even know it till he slapped you side the head. Well, praise God that he did. Uh, hallelujah, Brother Gary. You might know what I'm talking about. Uh, some of you others might know what I'm talking about. Uh, but when we begin to travail, uh, that's a word that's not used very much anymore. Uh, it, it's a word that comes from laboring and travailing. Uh, when a woman goes to have a child, amen, there's a place that she has to go to first. Uh, she goes to what they call now the labor room. What is she doing? She's in labor. Her, her body's making some changes. There's some things taking place. Uh, Brother Ricky, how do you know you've been there? No, but I, well, I have been there. Uh, but it wasn't me going through it. But I seen the changes. Uh, and I'm telling you, emotions change. Words change. Uh, but I want us to put us in that place, women, if you can, uh, of when you were in labor. Oh, some people say, Brother Ricky, I wasn't in that much labor. They just give me a shot. But I want to tell you in travailing. This is what was happening even on the day of Pentecost when the Bible said uh, that the 120, there was 500 to start with. Uh, but then there was 120 that tarried. Until... Now, when I read the Word of God, it tells me about on that day of Pentecost that they was in one place in one accord. Uh, and the Bible said they was doing what? They were in prayer and in supplication. Uh, I don't believe they was just repeating, send the promise, send the promise, send the promise. Uh, Lord, I'm waiting for the promise. Lord, where's the promise? Uh, but I believe, Brother Buddy, hallelujah, if I know anything about a, a Pentecostal prayer, glory to God, a prayer meeting, uh, would a bunch of Pentecostals done come up together uh, and they done been told... Hallelujah, the Spirit of God is going to fall in this place. If we'll seek His face, I'm telling you, there was some prayer going up. There was some intense prayer. They were praying in the Spirit. I believe they were groaning. I believe there was some at the place because they'd been there 10 days. I believe there was some that was exhausted. They was give out. But I want to tell you what else was happening. They was on the brink of their breakthrough. Hallelujah. And I believe the Bible said, and then suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a Russian mighty wind and it filled all the place they were sitting. I'm telling you the Holy Ghost that they interceded for he was interceding in their house and Jesus said I will indeed baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I want to tell you because they were grown and I believe in the spirit. Hallelujah. I believe he began to fill their minds and I believe he began to fill their minds with the word of God. Can you give God some praise up in this house. Amen. I believe this is an area of prayer that possibly many folks never enter into. Why? Y'all excuse me, but I got to get out of this jacket. Uh, because it is warfare. It takes some work. I can remember going through things in my life that, uh, you know, I done prayed all the little now. I let me, I done said all the little cute phrases I knew. And uh, I mean, I, I, I really was sincere with God praying. But brother Gene, I reached the place. Now I'm fixing to blow some of his mind because you, you, you may not have never been there and you may think, well, this can't even happen, but I guarantee you it does happen. Uh, and I challenge you to get to that place. Amen. Uh, I got to the place I had prayed so intently uh, and so fervently that I became intoxicated uh, with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of the living God. Uh, and he began to take over my being. Come on, somebody. Uh, and I want glory. Hallelujah. Well, you don't look at me like I'm crazy because uh, he's innocent. He? Well, if he's in us, he ought to have control uh, of every being, every fiber of our body. Uh, and when we get into that fervent place of praying with him, uh, oh, you see, uh, I'm going to make it a little clearer. Sword. This is what happened to Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
For the Bible said he prayed until his sweat became as great drops of blood. What was happening? The Bible declares it like this. I'm going to read it. It said he was groaning. I didn't say snarling. I said groaning and travailing. Now he had already prayed like this, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless my will, uh, but thy will be done. And the Bible said he groaned. Uh, with the, oh, this wasn't the first time he did it. When Lazarus died, uh, I want to tell you, my Lord groaned in the spirit then. Uh, I want to tell you the spirit realm is somewhere we need to get. And if we are children of God, the Bible said if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. And if you're going to walk in the spirit, uh, you're going to pray in the spirit. Can I get a witness in this house tonight, amen. When you really get down to business with God, you know why churches get in trouble? With getting certain pastors because they don't get in the spirit. They don't pray in the in the will of God. They pray in somebody's personality. They pray in somebody's will. Oh, hallelujah. oh they can sing. His wife can play the piano. Oh, this and that and the other. But what are we going to do? We're going to pray in the will of God. Their folks get in trouble. Amen. They get hooked up married and it wasn't even God's will why because they got caught up within themselves instead of praying in the will of God I counsel with folks like this I know what I'm talking about there is a realm there is a place that we can get in the Lord and groaning in the spirit and I ain't just talking about some old fooey where you're going to get out and start grunting and groaning and act like no 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 you'll know when the spirit takes over I said you'll know hallelujah when the Holy Ghost from heaven begins to take over, glory to God, because it's no longer you praying. It's the Holy Spirit of the living God praying through you. And let me tell you something, honey, when he begins to pray through you, the devil in hell, he can't interpret it. He can't invade it. He can't hinder it. Why? Because it's a direct link. Can somebody give God some praise? Oh, you may say, but preacher, how long have I got to serve God before I get to that place? Not very long. Because you begin when you take on the Lord Jesus Christ. You take on right then, hello, the warfare. That you've entered into warfare. And I want to tell you something. I'm going to read it to you. But did you know that praying in the Spirit is part of your armor as a child of God? Oh, help. I don't want to say that. (laughs) Oh, no. I know it's true, Lord. He just spoke to me and said, you know why so many people are wounded in the church? Because they're going by their emotions and they don't get in the realm of praying in the spirit. And they're operating off a feeling. Somebody hurt my feelings. Somebody offended me. Honey, you need to get somewhere and get along in the presence of God and begin to, like the old timer said, begin to pray through. Get in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Let the Spirit help your infirmities. I said, the Bible said the Spirit will help our weaknesses. If I'm weak in an area, you know what I need to do? Take it to the Lord in prayer and let Him, my God, the Spirit of God to heal you. It'll empower you. Somebody ought to give him some praise in the house tonight. Amen. And there's a great possibility that maybe never, many folks never enter into this place, the kind of prayer. For many, this only takes place many times. Amen. In people's lives, in extreme circumstances. When I found myself praying in the Spirit, I'm just going to be honest. The first time I remembered this, of praying and him interceding through. I knew it was him. It wasn't none of me. Because I'd done been there about three hours. And I done prayed everything I know to pray. And I, I was sweaty and stinky and everything else and wore out. And all of a sudden, it's like, glory, thank you, Lord. I, I like to drown one time when I was 14 years old. I was in a place called Clifton's Pond, which was a lake. And, and I want to tell you, this is how the spirit works. I, I done went up and down. I done counted 10 times. And the last time, I mean, I couldn't even touch bottom. And the last time I went down, I went was coming back up. And 
I was praying, God, forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I'm not ready to meet you, but I want you to forgive me. I'm about to, I know I'm about to drown in here. And all of a sudden, I felt a ump. Hallelujah. I felt somebody come up under me, and they pushed me out to the top of the water and said, take a big breath of air and hold on. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, that's how it is when the Holy Ghost begins to pray through you. He begins to give you, hallelujah, some supernatural power that you didn't know you had. He begins to give you some up and said, hey, I got this. Just rely on me. Let me take it from here. I got it. Just trust me. Just have faith and believe. Oh, somebody ought to give him some praise in this house. Many times extreme circumstances bring out either the worst or the best in an individual. And I was at a place, I'm just going to tell you straight up, I was broken. And it looked like every way I turned, there was no help. And I was doing everything I know to do to serve God. And I got me some old prayer partners with me. And I said, I want you to go with me. I didn't say help me pray, but I said, I want you to go with me and pray. And I looked around after about three hours. I don't blame them. They had wives at home. They had, they had things to do. It was daylight when we got there and it was dark when I got up. But you see, I stayed until, you know, a lot of times we, the Bible talks about coming short of the glory of God. You know, there's times he wants to just see how really hungry you are, how intense that we are. Now, now he can, all you got to do is say, oh, God, help me. And he'd be right there. I've been there too. That's in the spirit as well. Because when I severed this hand and I was hung up in that machine, when I realized and looked and seen what was going on, when it looked like, hey, if something don't happen, I'm fixing to die right here. This thing's eating me up. And it done had me and pulled me over in the bottom of that mixer. And I cried out and I said, oh, God, help me my hand. Oh, yeah, it might have been me, but I was groaning also in the spirit. And let me tell you an extreme circumstance. And my God come to the scene right then and there. Hallelujah. Glory be unto the Lamb of God. And then I can remember that day as we were praying. I mean, we don't work on a, on a mobile home line all day long. I know they was tired. I was too. But you see, I was fighting a devil. I was fighting some spirits from hell. And I felt I was at, you hear this preacher tonight, and I felt I was at my breaking point. And I felt I was at the place, Lord, I don't know what else to do, but I got to get somewhere. I know I've been going out on my lunch hour and praying. I've been fasting. But, Lord, I really need to get intently down with you in that spirit realm. I need to get in that place, hallelujah, where there ain't nothing else hindering me. It's just me and you. Glory be unto God. I lost sight of who was there. I lost sight of how long we was there. Did you hear this preacher tonight? And when I got lost in the presence, in the spirit of God, the spirit of God began to enter see through me and I'm I'm not telling you something I read I'm telling you something that you experience as a child of God there are times I can't fix your problems there's times as a pastor I would love to help you and fix your problems amen but sometimes I I can't do anything but pray and when I don't even know how to pray oh there's been times the pastor in a church Lord with situations arose and I didn't know what to do I gave you one example of the young man come to my house one night and said oh sister so and so you need to remove her and I said come on Joe and go with me he said, where are we going? I said, just follow me. And we got in the backyard up under the stars. And I knelt down and I said, get on your face before God. And he said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to pray. Because I don't know what to do. But I know one who does. I know where to go to when I need help. And I begin to pray and the Spirit began to intercede. We got up and there his mind, his emotions took over again. What that tells me is he never got in the realm of the Spirit spirit. And he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to do just what the Lord told me when I got up. Nothing. You know, we'll sing that song, take it to the Lord and leave it there. But honey, how many people, when they come to the altar and pray, they pick it back up like a knapsack and they tote it back with them. And they want to say some old stupid thing like this. Well, God must not have heard my prayers or God just didn't. No, wait a minute. Don't you blame God. God. 
for not answering your prayer. You got to steal away. God hears the prayers of his children. He's not obligated to the, the prayer of sinners, not for certain things. He is when they come to salvation, but it, when it comes to financial things, when it comes to miracles, when it comes to healing, why God is not obligated to the sinner except for the plan of salvation. But once we've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, we can now have access and we can come boldly to the throne room of God to obtain grace and mercy in the time of need. Can you give him praise in the house? Say, man, fervent prayer. I looked around and no boys done left me. They told me the next day we had to go home. I said, it's okay. I got my breakthrough. I got what I came for. I just wanted some moral support. You see, they couldn't give me the spiritual support. Oh, people can tell you, Brother Gary, they they say, people mean well. They try to make you feel better. Oh, I know how you're feeling. No, you don't. (laughs) You ain't been there. I appreciate your kind words. And I'll tell them, pray for me. Brother Bucky, there's some things that I just got to get along with him with. Hello. There's some things that I don't understand what you're going through. Sister Janet, how can I? All I know to do is, I mean, I've never been diagnosed with cancer. I can have feelings for you and I can pray according to the word of God. I'm going to go there in just a minute. Hallelujah. Oh, you see, people say, well, how do you know you're praying the will of God? How do you know you're praying in the will of God? Well, let me say this. If you're living as a child of God and the spirit of God is within you, let me tell you what's going to happen. When you pray, The Spirit of God that is in you, it's going to line right up beside the Word of God. Come on. It's not going to veer from the Word of God. It's going to line, it's going to go right along with God's Word. Why? Because the Spirit and the Word is inseparable. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And I'm telling you, when you get in the Spirit, you'll begin to pray the Word of God. What is the Word of God? The will of God. Hallelujah. It'll bring your body and your mind under subjection of the Spirit of Almighty God. Oh, Brother Ricky, I just, I just can't quit that cussing. I, I just can't quit that lying. I just can't quit that stealing. I, I just can't quit that cheating. Come on somebody. I just can't quit that backbiting. Oh yes you can. You line up with the word and the spirit of God is in you. Oh thank you Holy Ghost. And the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My Lord and my God you ought to be stepping all over the devil's head with the word and the spirit that is in you. Somebody give him some more praise in this house tonight. Glory to God. Boy, I got so much here. I know I never care of it at all, but I, oh, I'm having fun anyway. I, I ain't even got to my scriptures. Uh, maybe I'll get to them in just a minute. Uh, amen. You see, you can pray for God to save a loved one uh, or to meet a certain need in your life. Uh, and while, uh, amen, uh, we were sincere and are sincere uh, in our asking and our petitioning God for the answer, for the need, for the manifestation, uh, we may have prayed this same way many times uh, and even many years. Come on, somebody. And seemingly there is no answer that seems to come. And the first thing the devil's going to do because you're in spiritual warfare, he's going to jump up there first of all and say, God ain't even heard your prayer. Well, number one, you ought to know what the Word said. And the Spirit that is in you will lead you and teach you all things and lead you into all truth. And here it is, very familiar, John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not except for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you can have life and have it more abundantly. You won't know about that life till you get in the Spirit realm. Some folks just got fire insurance and they're satisfied. No, 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 no. No, I, I, I can't deal with just fire insurance. i got to have more. Hello. Now, I know Volkswagens is nice now if they're still making them. But I don't want just a Volkswagen. Hello. I don't want that 6 to 1 Mercury Comet my daddy gave me in the backyard with air windshield wipers. And with drum brakes all the way around. And when you, you got to pump it to stop it. And because one of them's acting up, it's going to lock up and squall the front tire. I, uh, uh, I ain't want to go back to that economy. No, I want, I want something. Uh, I'm going to go on a little further. My mama said, get out on the highway in Waycross, Georgia, in town. Get up under there and unlock them gears. They hung up again. Y'all must have been there too. Between first and second or second and third, 
That old, I know we only, you women, you only want, there's a shifter tube that goes along down there. It's got some levers on it, and there's two levers down there, or three levers on that transmission, first, second, third, and reverse. And anyway, it's a good thing. Hey, man, and mama said, get down there and unlock it, son, where we can go in, in forward again. I don't want to go back to the old 61 Merker comment. I don't want to just go in and, and pray in little basic prayers. No, I, I want, I, Paul said, I want to know him. And I want to know him in the fullness of his power. And in the power of his, now you can just, you can just hang on that little bit of fire insurance you want. If you, if you, that's fine. But I don't want just fire insurance. I want to know him. My God. But the Gary, the more I get in the spirit, the more I allow the spirit in my life to dominate, the more I know him. And the more, oh, hallelujah, and the more I know he's real, and the more I know he's in, well, I said, I know he's in me. Who oh, greater is, Brother Gene, greater is he that is in us. And the more you practice, I said practice, yeah, the more. You don't have to wait till an extreme circumstance in your life to get in the spirit realm to pray. I said, you can get in the spirit realm every day and pray. It become, come on somebody, it can, can become just like I get every night, most of the time, unless I go to sleep and forget it. I, I said, the coffee pot up and got it ready and she wants three scoops in there because she I don't give me no stump water she said I want it strong I said okay and every morning when I get up, the first thing I do, wash my face and say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, I begin to give him some matter. Sometimes I do it before I ever get out of bed, begin to thank him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. What are you doing? I'm preparing myself to get into the spirit realm. I'm not going to wait in the course of the day when I get in trouble or, or I have an encounter with the devil or I have a, an extreme certain. No, no, no. I want to I wanna know what it is to get in his presence every day. I want to walk in his presence. I want to talk in his presence. I want to abide in his presence because I'm going to run up with somebody. They're going to need somebody to intercede. They're going to need somebody to go into the throne room for them. Can somebody give God some praise in this house? I don't want just fire insurance. That scared me to death if that's all I had was fire insurance. Now, if you die and you got fire insurance, you're all right. You're going to go to heaven if your sins are under the blood. But you see, the Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. My God, don't make me sad. <laughs> These some folks, they ain't chosen because they don't want to walk and be led by the Spirit. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> if it wasn't for their flesh, my Lord Jesus. <laughs> Preacher, you're judging? No, but the Bible said you know the tree by the fruit it bears. <laughs> and I've seen some things, some people that is nothing but the flesh. <laughs> and I want to know that the Spirit of God is within them. Can I get a witness <laughs> in this house tonight? I want to know they've been with God. <laughs> I want to know they know what they're talking about. Out. Don't sell me a Ford if you're driving a Chevrolet. Come on, somebody. Ah, glory to God. Preacher, you're rough. No, I'm just telling it like it is. There's a realm that we can get in in our prayer life. We say we walk in the Spirit. The Bible said if we're sons and daughters of God, we'll be led by the Spirit. Now, that word Spirit, you pray in the Spirit, you walk in the Spirit, you led by the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. It don't say that we won't have lust of the flesh. I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Get your report card out. And if and when, did you hear the words? If and when you stumble, you obey the flesh and let it override the spirit. Look at your report card. You know what it will reveal? Well, when they sprung wide on me, sent one home for my mom and dad to sign, it showed I ain't been in the books. When I got deficiency slip, you know what it showed? Yeah, I mean, they, boy, they had the checks, X's. And then they had on the bottom where for comments, remarks, he spends too much time at the window looking out. Yeah, I want to go to recess. Fool with all this other junk. I come to play. And I didn't care nothing about their lunchroom except for them big old, cin I, they looked like they was that big cinnamon rolls. Now, some of you, I mentioned food and you right with me. But in the spirit realm, I don't want to tell somebody about just something I read. I've experienced it, Brother Warren. 
No wonder the Bible says, oh, taste of me and see that I'm good. What is he? He's given us invitation to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit. And there are times, can I give us a news flash in the church of God? There are times that the Spirit of God will lead us to get in the Spirit to pray. I said there's a lot of folks who never get there. Why? They're afraid of the spiritual warfare. But I want to tell you, this is part of our armament. If I could go to Ephesians chapter 6, I believe it is. I don't remember if it's verse 13 or verse 18. There we go. Wow. Boy, she's good, isn't she? The Bible said, wherefore, take unto you some of the armor of God. Oh, oh, they don't say that. Sister Josephine, it says what? The whole armor of God. Why do I need the whole armor? Because it'll make you complete. Oh, hallelujah, brother. He said, take the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand, withstand in the evil day and having all to stand. Go to the next one, 14. I know I didn't give it to you, but stand there for. Amen. She may have to pull it up. Hallelujah. I don't know how they do that, but anyways. Hallelujah. Stand there for having. I'm going to go all the way through verse 18 if you can, sister. Amen. Stand there for having your, your loins girt about with the truth. I ain't got time to tell about what all they protect, but I'm telling you, the loin area is vulnerable. Come on. He said, have it with the truth. Come on, boy. I can preach right there. Ooh, well, some of you get upset with me, but I, I better go on. Hallelujah. And have on the breastplate. What's behind the breastplate? The heart is there. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Let's move on. And he said in verse 15, and your feet shod with the breastplate of the gospel of peace. He didn't say preparation H. He said preparation of the gospel of peace. I tell you what I'm going to do when I get to church. If they there, you, if they there, I'm going I'm to tell them just how I really feel. You wait till I see them again, boy. You really, you really got your gospel shoes on, ain't you? Hear me, somebody. And then he said, above all, take the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able, listen, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. But he didn't stop there. Go to verse 17. And he said, and take the helmet of salvation. There's a lot of people that ain't got wounded in the head. The devil's wounded them. They've allowed other people to wound them because they never step in the spirit realm. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, yet, but when we was little kids, we say stick and stones <laughs> may bake my bones, but your words can't harm me. But it's amazing when we call ourselves mature Christians. You just don't know what they said. I ain't going back. <laughs> My goodness, you didn't have nothing to start with. You didn't put the armor on. Honey, I wish y'all could be in some places where I've had some members, some things they've told me. Even some preachers and some overseers have lied to me. But you know what? I ain't living for them. I'm living for Jesus. I'm working for his kingdom, not man's kingdom. Glory to God. And he said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? Here it is, the word of God. What I need the word of God? It can't return void. <laughs> and when you put glory to God, it's been spirit given. It'll be spiritually discerned. <laughs> and when you begin to get in that realm of praying in the spirit and you line it up with the word of God, hallelujah. I mean, it'll bear witness one with another. I'm telling you, it cannot, it's unstoppable. I said it's unstoppable in the name of Jesus. But look what he goes on to say. Praying always. Brother Ricky, I only pray when I get in trouble. I only pray when I really got something bad going on. Praying always. Do you, do you just eat when you get in trouble? You just eat when you get hungry? Well, about 11 o'clock tonight, I'll go in there and see if there's a couple of Oreos. And the dogs, they're going to come running because they want one too. And Sister Angie's got them spoiled rotten. Put a Benadryl in it and tempt them and get them to get that Benadryl. Hello, because they got allergies. But he said, praying always with all. What kind of prayer? Somebody help me preach this. What kind of prayer? Say it again. All prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication. How? Oh, not in the flesh. Lord, my body's just so weak, I can't pray no more. Lord, it, I'm so sleepy, I can't pray. Lord, you know I got too much to do. I can't pray. I got to wash them clothes. Lord, I got to go over yonder and do this. I, I can't pray right now. Let me tell you something. You can condition yourself in the spirit realm regardless of what you're doing to get in the spirit realm to pray. I don't care if you're driving down the road. You can begin to pray in the spirit. 
Hello? And he'll begin to pray through you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Brother Ricky, I ain't got that much to pray about. I'm telling you, you just don't know. Oh, Paul is pay- praying for all the saints, and he's sending letters back to them. And he's saying, I'm praying for all of you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, church, the Bible instructs us to pray one for another. And I'm telling you, if you ain't got, I'm, I, I need your prayers. I do. I, we are in a warfare. The devil's mad. When you baptize 35, seven folks, don't you think the devil don't get mad? I, I'm telling you, when you lead people to Jesus, don't you think the devil don't get mad? He's upset. I, but I'm telling you, he is also defeated. I, and those times that we can know it when we get in the spirit realm, I, and we begin to pray in the spirit in prayer and in supplication. Could you put it back up there for me, please? I, amen. There's some more meat right there. I, he said, in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Brother Gary, sometime I might I don't know how to pray for you. But Brother Warren, the Spirit of God in me knows how to pray for you. I mean, I prayed I'm blue in the face for that daughter of mine, but you know what the Lord spoke to me one night in Fargo, Georgia, and I, be, I was complaining. I'll never forget it. And I'm like, Lord, what's it going to take? You know what he spoke right back to me and said? When's the last time you spent all night in prayer for her? I said, I'm sorry, Lord. It don't take all night, but he meant, when is the last time that you were so intently in prayer in the spirit realm that you sacrificed? You really sacrificed. When you lay it, no wonder the word says, lay aside every sin and every weight that so easily besets you and run with patience the race that has been set before us. I'm telling you, prayer, it takes some work. Come on. Some prayer, it it takes some supplication. It it, it takes some putting this old flesh under subjection. But you know what I found out? The more I'll get in the Spirit and pray, the more the flesh will come under subjection to the Spirit of God that dwelleth within me. The more the flesh will line up with... I didn't say sometime that the the flesh wouldn't war, because it does. I'd be a liar to stand here and tell you the flesh didn't rise up in me at time and lust to do other things. But I know, because the Bible says I'm not ignorant of Satan's devices. And I know what it'll take to walk upright, what it takes to stay, hello, on fire for God. It takes getting in the spirit realm. Oh, I got to hurry. <sighs> Praise the Lord. I've got you some more scriptures. <laughs> oh, you see, but when we allow or we enter into the realm of the Holy Spirit and we begin to pray in the spirit, the Holy Ghost begins to intercede for us. <laughs> Anybody ever been to court and you had to have an attorney there? I've been there. And regardless of my emotions, you know what he would say? Keep your mouth shut. Hello? I've seen lawyers turn around and say, didn't you hire me? I mean, like, what are you doing, stupid? There's times that I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to ask God for what I have need. I know I have a need, but I don't know how to arrive to get there. I don't, I don't know even how to tell him how to answer the prayer that I got. If I can, if I can explain it like that, I got a great need in my life, but Lord, I don't even know how to tell you to, uh, to answer this need. I just got this need. And so I said, Angie, one time when I owed $170,000 medical bills and she said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going to do what we've always done. We're going to trust God. And it wasn't she had a lack of faith. Please don't misunderstand me. And I remember standing in the living room at the Fargo Church of God in that little old trailer. And we took the anointing oil and we saturated part of them bills, the corner of those bills with that oil. And we stood there in faith believing. I said, Lord, I mean, I reached a place I don't know what else to do, Lord. I, I don't have no savings. The church don't have it. Defects won't help us. I mean, Lord, we're at the point where we ain't got no other choice. And, and you get to that place, you get begin to groan and in the spirit. You begin to, you really, I mean, you get beside yourself. When you don't know what to do, Lord, I've done everything I know to do. And it looks like doors are shutting, Lord. I said, it's all you. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to do it. I don't even care. I'm at that place spiritually, Lord. That my, my dependence is totally 100% upon you. Can I tell you? 
When you get to that place in the spirit realm, God will begin to intervene in your life. He'll begin to lead you in places you never thought. He'll begin to take you places. Uh, that you, and you're talking about faith. Glory to God. Uh, that's like when I, I told that lawyer when he said, there ain't no way uh, about a sir. I said, man, you just don't know. <laughs> uh, when that doctor, you know how I told that doctor when he told me, that you don't know what you're saying. We got to come up here and take your arm. I said, you ain't taking my arm off. I, I said, God's going to heal me and give me the use of it back. And he's like, you don't know what you're saying. And I got argumentative with him. I said, no, you don't, you don't know what you're saying. I mean, you're talking from scientific research and you're talking from, uh, uh, in the natural, but I'm, I done been in the supernatural and the same God that stopped that mixer, the same God that kept me from bleeding to death is the same God that's going to restore my health back and give me the use of my... I said, there is nothing... You see, we want to limit God, but I'm telling you, He's a limitless God. And when we get in the realm of the Spirit, we begin to understand He's greater than what we ever could even imagine that He is. He can do it ex- exceedingly, abundantly above that, that we even ask or think according to the power of God that working within us, what is the power of God? It's the Word and the Spirit. And when it comes alive in us, honey, look out, devil. Church, I, I implore of you to reach that place of getting in the spirit realm. Don't wait till you have an extreme crisis in your life. Daily begin to still along with the Lord. You know, I think that that's one of the, that's one of the places that the church world we're lacking is in our prayer life. From the pulpit to the back doors. Hello. I, I don't want some instant sermon. I want the Lord to breathe something in me in the spirit realm. And you know, there's times when I'm preaching, I'm like, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. You know what's happening? I'm in the spirit. And you know what's happening in the spirit? He's showing me things that I know not. He's, he's revealing himself to me because he's a revelator. Amen. He'll reveal himself to us. The word comes alive within us. And he knows somebody sitting in that congregation or either the pastor one or all of us together that we need that little nugget. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise in the house. There's nothing wrong with praying. And we do both. Getting down, Lord, save my lost loved ones. Lord, meet my financial needs. Can I tell you every prayer is conditional? Really? Yes. Every prayer you pray is conditional. Really? Now understand, Pastor, I don't want to lose you right here. Sometimes we have to meet conditions. Come on. If you want to be saved when you pray, you have to believe. There's a condition. Hello? The Word of God said, seek, and you'll find. Hallelujah. There's conditions that we have to meet, amen, with the Lord for the prayers to be answered. Yes, He's paid the price, but there's some conditions we've got to meet, amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, children of God, when we get in the spirit realm with the Lord, we can not only know that He's heard us, but we can hear from Him. I I want to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, amen. Oh, you see, there are times, amen, that we just, we pray with everything within us, amen. There's times we pray with our understanding, we pray with the mind, we pray through our intellect, we pray, amen. But there's times that we don't even know how to pray. Lord, I done prayed for them. All I know how to pray for them. Brother Gary, me and you talked about our children and, and Timothy and Matthew, how you prayed for them and how Sister Sharon prayed for them. You reach a place, Lord, I don't know what else to say, amen. Do you have that scripture, sister? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. I thought I had it marked down somewhere. Hey Amen. There it is. And they did all drink of that same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. I may have gave you the wrong one. Amen. Well, when we pray with our understanding, that is with our mind, our intellect, how we feel, how our thoughts are, how our desires are, and how our per- I know I'm going a little fast, but we got to get this. You see, there's times that we pray, the Bible says, with our understanding. Lord, I understand how I'm praying. Lord, I'm praying for this need. I'm praying for that need. Oh, amen. We we pray with our mind, our intellect. We pray how we feel, our feelings, our emotions. We feel how we pray our thoughts. We pray our desires. We pray for God's purposes and our purposes as God. But that's limited. Now, I can pray like this. Lord, give Sister Vicky a new job. 
Maybe she's told me she ain't, but maybe she told me she needed the new job. Well, I believe that you pray specifically. But we've been praying six months and ain't nothing happened. So I go now to Sister Vicky and I say, Sister Vicky, have you been fasting and praying? Oh, that's another dimension. But it's part of the spirit realm. Oh, I can't fast. You'd be surprised what you can do when the spirit intervenes. Let me just go ahead and tell you the first 24 hours. Matter of fact, close to 48 hours, you're going to have headaches. But after that third day, let me go on and tell you this. The headaches go. Because you're doing a cleansing. That's what's happening. The caffeine's getting out of your body. You're detoxing. That's what's happening. And after that, oh, after about that third day, glory to God, you getting at the place then you can show sure here something. You can hear, oh, 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 your stomach's done quit rumbling. Oh, because you've been praying, you've been seeking the face of God because you're so hungry. There's a need in your life. Come on, somebody. And you reach that place. I've tried everything else. I prayed all the way I know how to pray. Now I'm going to put some fasting with it. Some of the things the Bible says comes only through fasting and prayer. And when you couple them, oh, I want you to, I want you to look at you, 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 can, you can make a cake. Who was that made one the other night, a pound cake? And it was pretty good, but you leave something out. You leave some ingredients out of that cake, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be flat, and people may try to flatter you and say, oh, it was good, and get behind your back and say, oh, God. Because they left an ingredient out, and they just didn't want to hurt your feelings. Hello? Can't nobody do pies like Sister Tiny, though. I'll just go ahead. I'm going to keep getting them pies, Sister Maxine. You keep getting the pecans. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll even go pick them up and hold them. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't need them, I know. But you leave an ingredient out, and it's going to show up. you got an extreme need in your life or your family's life, and you done prayed all them little cute prayers, and you done said all you know, and ain't nothing wrong with that. There's times, hey, you can do that and get by with it, and it's okay. There's times, but there's other circumstances. Some things come on. You see, the disciples, they couldn't cast the demon out. Why? He said, this kind goeth only by fasting and praying. It's okay that you prayed. It's okay you prayed in Jesus' name. But did nothing really happen. Why? There's a warfare going on. So what are you going to do? You're going to run? You're going to just leave it there? Uh Uh-uh. I'm coming to get my stuff. (laughs) Come on. No, sir. Uh Uh-uh, devil. You done had it too long. You done done muddied this thing up. I'm coming. But I ain't coming by myself. I'm arming myself with the whole armor of God. And when I get there, you're going to know I've been there. Because the Holy Ghost that is up in me, hallelujah, he's going to intercede for me. Glory to God. And let me just go ahead and put your notice, Satan. You're going down. You're already under. Matter of fact, you're already defeated. You're just having a memory relapse. But when the Holy Ghost gets through with you, hello, And I do believe with all my heart you get in that place in the spirit realm praying. The Holy Ghost is going to give you divine assurance. It's all right. I took care of it. Go ahead and rejoice. Paul said, rejoice again. I say unto thee, rejoice. Go ahead and give God the praise. Hallelujah. Don't fret yourself. Oh, yeah, that's what the Bible said. Don't fret yourself even for evildoers. Why? Get in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Some folks, y'all wouldn't believe it. In a Pentecostal church. People will look at you like you're crazy when you preach like this. You know what that's saying? You ain't never been there. I mean, I'm just being honest. And I'm going to tell you, it's some work. It'll take a toll on you. But, oh, my God, where you get spiritually. When you begin to see in the spirit realm what God is doing. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, I can remember that night right here praying for that lady. Amen. And, and, and the spirit was high. What do you mean? The Spirit of God was moving. I call her name. You'd know who she was. I, the Spirit, every time I, I could see it was just like they was, the Spirit of God was around her. And what it was was prayers, and it was the supernatural. And every time the devil would try to reach in to get her, Son, the Holy Ghost, that it was like a tornadic activity. Every time the enemy would try to reach in, he would be thrown back. That's how it is when we get in the spirit realm. When we begin to pray intently, you may have a loved one, and I'm preaching to the preacher tonight as well. When we get into that realm of the spirit, praying like we ought to, uh, like the church was birthed in a Pentecostal prayer meeting. Did you hear this, Pastor? I said, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. They was in uh, a supernatural prayer meeting in the spirit, praying. uh, And what happened? The spirit showed up and filled every vessel that was there. Can you give him praise in this house? 
I understand it because it's work. And some people do not want to get there. I got just a few more scriptures and I, I, I'll, come to the, I'll come to a close. It is not only part of our armor. Oh, sister, can you go to Luke chapter 18 and verse 1? Hallelujah. I want to give you some scriptures. I, I'm probably not going to get to cover it all anyways. I never do. And the Bible said he spoke a parable unto them to this end that men always, ought always to pray and not to faint. Well, let's flip that scripture around just a little bit. Let's just go in and just mess it up a little bit and uh, just rearrange this, what I mean. You know why a lot of people faint and become weary? It's right there. They're not praying. Uh Uh-oh. I I, I feel a mean streak. We, uh, We got too much playing going on. Well, that's speaking the natural and the supernatural because when I was a child, I, you know why I didn't learn at school like I needed to? Because I was too busy wanting to play. You know why God's people ain't getting what they need from God sometime? Because they're not in the prayer closet, they're playing. I mean, they're playing on Facebook. They're playing on, is it Snapchat? Yeah, uh, Y'all, please don't, if I butcher it, just laugh and go on. They're Twittering and Tweetering and... Uh, what all them other things is out there that they're doing instead of on their face before God praying from the pulpit to the back door. But God intends for his people. He always has. He's intended for us to pray. It's a relational thing with him. It brings us in communication with the Father. It lets us know what the will of God is for our life. It brings us into the spirit realm. You, you can't really know God until you walk into spirit. Come on. You can know about him, but until you walk in the spirit with him. I said, if you're sons and daughters of God, your Bible says we'll be led. I didn't just make this up. The word says we'll be led by the spirit. And there's times, can you hear this preacher tonight? There are times he will lead us in the spirit to pray. That ought to be every day. I think what's happened is we're resisting, but the Bible, no wonder it says, submit yourself unto God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. No wonder he ain't fleeing. Why? Because we hadn't submitted. Oh boy, they submit. You see this meat in here? If we can ever submit to the Spirit of God and the Word of God and do what the Word of God commands us to do, Glory to God, we will walk around, hallelujah, subduing devils. Come on, laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. Come on, somebody. I, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I, I'm telling you, but it takes obedience to the Word and the Spirit of Almighty God. Let me give you just a few more scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you go to First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 6, 17? Hallelujah. I, I got to cover. Look what else he said. He said to pray without what? Well, sometimes we like to eat without ceasing. Sometimes we like to watch TV without ceasing. I mean, we just fall asleep. Hello? But what about praying without ceasing? There's a place we can get in the Lord that we should be in the Lord. Right down the highway. It don't matter what we're doing. We can pray. And, and what I mean by that. You, you may be in a place and you may say, well, brother, they won't let me pray on my job. I can't just verbally out pray. You can get in the spirit and pray. Hello? Don't tell me. I've been there. I've been doing my job and praying at the same time. The spirit of God praying in me. Come on. I got to give you some more nuggets. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me go to, go to John's gospel, chapter 11, verses 33, and then verses 38 through uh, 43. He said, when Jesus, now you, you want to hear about some groaning? You want to hear about praying in the spirit? And boy, I can do a questionnaire right here and say, how many of us has ever been here? Watch this. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he done what? This is when Lazarus died. He did what? No, he didn't. Why? Why? Because him and Lazarus was like that. He was grieved in his spirit and he groaned in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. He, he knew what he was doing. The woman was there with the issue of blood. And, uh, and they came to him and said, hey, hey, hey your friend, he's, he's, he's sick unto death. And, 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 you know, he tarried his going. Why? That, that the Father really might be glorified and that he might be glorified and that, that another miracle be, would be wrought. <laughs> and, and I could see him now. They was all complaining and wondering. The Jews even was there and was speaking to himself. Why didn't he go? I thought Lazarus was 
his friend. Why didn't he just forsake all this other business and go take care of him? And he said, he's not dead as you think. or He's only asleep. And they like, you crazy, man. He's dead. Uh, we seen him wrap him in grave clothes. We seen him put him in that tomb. Hey, Amen. Come on, somebody. Oh, can we go on to verse 38? I believe it is. Let's pick up right there. Jesus, therefore, again, done what? In what? He was in the spirit. Now, understand this pastor right here. He was flesh just like you and I right here, but he was spirit filled. Hello? Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, he came into the grave. And it was a cave and a stone lay upon it in verse 39. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look what he says. I'll just stay with me a few more minutes. Let me give you these nuggets. Jesus said, take you away the stone. And Martha, the sister of him that was dead, he saith unto the Lord. Lord, by this time, you know what? He stinketh, for he's been dead now four days. If you'd only been here a little bit sooner, go on to verse 40, if you will, please. Jesus said to her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe. There's, there's some condition right there, y'all. If thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the what? Well, we can't have revival here no more. Why can't you? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We don't see nobody saved no more. We ain't seen nobody healed in a miracle in years. Why not? Could it be that we're not tearing in the spirit? Come on. Could it be that we're not meeting the conditions? Y'all don't shout me down. I'm preaching to the preacher too. Okay, go on to verse 41 if you would please. They, and then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes. And he said, Father, I thank thee first of all that thou hast, number one, you've heard me. Who oh, can I tell you? He was groaning in the spirit. Some people might want to argue with that. But I'm telling you, he was labored. He was, he was burdened because he loved Lazarus. And I want to tell you, the Lord loves us. And I believe there's times, that, Brother Gary Holton, there's times he groaned in the spirit for us. How do you know? Because the word of God said Jesus even told Peter, he said, I am praying for thee that thy faith fail not. But when thou art converted, go and strengthen the brethren. I'm telling you, he's taught us how to pray even groaning in the spirit. Amen. Oh, can you go to the next one in verse 43? Oh, the Bible says, hallelujah. Then and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice again. And he said, Lazarus come forth. Aren't you glad that he didn't call everybody? Ain't you glad it wasn't just to general, but he was specific. Lazarus come forth. And the Bible says in verse 44, these words, hallelujah. He said, and that he that was dead came forth. He was bound hand and foot in the grave clothes. And his faith was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto him, loose him and let him go. He didn't have to say this. He could have set him free himself. Oh, but there's some conditions sometimes he wants us to meet. Can somebody give God some praise? I want to give you just a few more scriptures and I promise I'll close. I want to go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 44. And this is another example of praying in the Spirit. All of us know the story when Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He took his disciples with him. And he got a certain place and he took the sons of thunder with him, the three. And then he got to a certain place with them and he said, Terry here. He said, in other words, stay here, wait on me, pray with me. Actually, that's what he was saying to them. I brought you to this place, and, and I want you to come, for this is a crucial hour in my life. This is a crucial hour in your life. He said, I'm about to be taken away from you. The one who is going to betray me, he's about to come. He's about to be, he's about to step on the scene because my hour is almost here. And the Bible said Jesus knelt down and being in agony. The Bible said he prayed more earnestly. Did you hear the, the wording here? There's times our little now I lay me down and sleep prayers ain't going to cut it. There's times just general prayers. Please hear this, Pastor, tonight. There's nothing wrong with praying in general. Lord, bless my family. God, protect them. Lord, keep them. But there's times, y'all, that we got to get past the general praying and we got to get the specific. We got to get in earnest with the Lord. Uh, and the Bible says, the effectual fervent prayer of righteous men availeth much. Uh, this is what was taking place when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. For the Bible said, and being in what? In agony. He had an extreme situation uh, and he was in agony. He was hurting. He loved those. Uh, he loved 
those disciples. He was doing the will of the Father, but he knew, I've got to finish what he sent me to do. And the Bible said he prayed the more earnestly, and his sweat was as it was even great drops of blood falling to the ground. I've talked to nurses. I've talked to doctors in the medical field. and How is this possible that someone that their sweat can become as great drops of blood and appear to be as such? The capillaries up under your skin. The body can be in extreme pressure and under such agony. Amen. And you can be agonizing so great. Can you imagine? I've never been to that place yet. Anybody been here? And the Bible says that he began to profusely, his sweat became as great drops of blood as he were, and they were falling to the ground. Why? Because he was in agony and he was groaning in the spirit. I believe the spirit of God was, was interceding even through him. I want to tell you there are times, church, that we'll get to that place. Hallelujah. I, I believe it's a level. It's a, it, it's a level in the spiritual realm that we can ever one be at. Now, I pray God don't put you there tomorrow just in an extreme circumstance. Brother Warren, when I went to the hospital when Sister Judy was in there, Sister Von Seal Peacock like to worried me to death. Have you been yet? Have you been yet? She called my phone. Have you been up there yet? And I said, Sister Von Seal, just calm down. I said, I've been praying and I've been seeking the face of God. And I'm waiting on the Lord to speak to me when to go. You see, the time's got to be right. Oh, I could just go out of a favor and say, hey, I, I'm the pastor of Moses Church of God, and I just come out and had a word of prayer with you. I've done that today. I went by in a man's room, and I said, he knew me. I knew him, and I said, I want to have a word of prayer with you. Go ahead. Oh, that's the nice, that's, that's, the, that's a wonderful thing to do. I meant business when I prayed. But there's some things when you face some valleys, storms, spirits, you better be prayed up. You better be got in touch with God. The Bible says lay hands on man, no man, suddenly. What is that telling me? As a child of God, as a prayer warrior, it's telling me to get in the spirit realm. It's telling me to arm myself with the spirit of God. It's telling me to get in the supernatural. Come on. Because I'm fixing to face something that ain't natural. Come on in one sense of the word. Uh, and when I walked up there, uh, uh, I seen him. You know what I had prayed? I had prayed, Lord, I don't want a crowd there. I don't want naysayers there. Because I done heard about some of them. I done heard what they were saying. What's the doctor saying? How much longer are they giving her? I ain't want to hear that junk. I want to be led by the Spirit. So I began to pray in the Spirit. And the Lord spoke to me and said, it's time to go now. It's about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And I got there. Guess who was there? One man. And you know what? I didn't even know who he was. Yes. And then, uh, or Brother Jonathan, I might have met you. I can't remember if I'd met you before that or not. I think I probably had. Maybe you was even come to church here. But... I remember when I walked in there, your dad, I didn't know him. And I began to give you testimonies about what God done for me, how he healed my hand. And I know he thought I was, I was probably crazy. Even the way I prayed was different. Because when I walked in that room, the Spirit began to pray through me. And I began to rebuke death off of her because that's what the Lord showed me in the Spirit, that the death Spirit was there. And I began to rebuke that death spirit in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and I left in the spirit. Glory to God. I didn't see her set up while we were there. Hello? I, but at 3 o'clock, I got a, about 3.30, I got a phone call. And it was Sister Von Seal. She said, you went by and prayed for Judy, didn't you? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, oh, I just got to tell you. She said she set up about 10 minutes after 3 and asked for something to write with. It wasn't me, but it was the spirit that interceded in us. Church, I want to tell you, it'll work. And there are times that we just, we've got to, we got to learn to get in the spirit to pray. Now, there's more to this. 
There's times there will be groanings and utterance that you know not that you get in such labor, such toiling, such agony in prayer. There are other times that when you get down to pray, I know me and my wife, there's been times we get down to pray. And I mean the Holy Ghost just began to pray through both of us at the same time. I mean, we don't know what each other's saying, but the Spirit knows. Hello. Now, it'd be one thing to come up in here and just go to praying in tongues all the time and and nobody knows what you're saying. It ain't going to edify nobody. It ain't going to help nobody. Amen. There are times that the Holy Ghost will do that. And there's times when I'm preaching the Holy Ghost will speak through me. But you know what he's doing? He's edifying me. And he's confirming the Word of God. Hello? And there are other times that the Holy Ghost will give out a message and that will be interpreted. And We're not going to get into all that tonight, but I'm talking about praying in the Spirit. There's times you will pray in tongues if you're filled with the Spirit. There are other times that you're not going to even know how to pray. That this is where I'm talking about, that the Spirit of God begins to intercede through you. Sister Janet Jennings, I know you've been there. During this time of sickness and cancer and disease, and you reach a place that you know not how to even pray anymore. What is that saying to us? What is that saying to God? It's saying, God, my total dependence is upon you. That I am so weak and so weary, and I don't know what to do. But I know that you know. And when we reach that place, it's, y'all, I, I don't know how to explain it exactly how it really is. But it's like something, it's like that boy lifting me up out of that water that day. It's like when the Spirit of God comes up in you, you know that you know that you know. It's all right. I don't have to worry. It's okay. Why? Because the Spirit of God has interceded. Stand with me all over the house. Hallelujah. Sometimes I know I get a little long-winded, but I get caught up in this word, and it's, I, won't, I just want people to get, to get it so bad. Because I'm going to tell you, should the Lord tarry is coming, you're going to have to know how to get in that spirit room and pray. You're going to have to need to, to, to surpass your vocabulary and your will and pray in the will of the Lord. I, I don't know no other way to say, but just this one phrase, get lost in the presence of the Lord. And when you get to that place, honey, that you know, that you know, and you may say, you're crazy, and it'll say, and you're nowhere. <laughs> That's deep in the recesses of your soul. Everything is all right. That's what happened that day my mother passed when they took her off the ventilator. I walked in that room. My emotions wanted to take over. I began to weep. I began to cry. That's my only mama laying there. And I was hurting. My flesh was hurting. And we heard the reports of the doctor. And I told my sister, I said, Deb, I got to go in here and pray. Uh, no, I don't need to stand here and grieve. I don't need to hear and stay all, all the things of how I really feel. I need to pray. There's times, there's times you just need to pray. But when I got in there, I was so in such agony. I was hurting so bad. I couldn't even pray, but something began to pray in me. The spirit of the living God in me began to intercede. And I knew that I knew when I got up, when I got up off of that floor, kneeling down, I knew right then he gave me, he gave me peace. I knew everything's okay. She's all right. She's in the hands of the Lord. And when I stepped out of that bathroom and I looked on either side of her bed in the corner and I seen the angel on both sides. And, and I mean, it was like they was just waiting. They was, had their head bent like that, right? I've never seen angels before. They had their head bent like that. And their, their wings went up into the celotex in the hospital room. And they was just like waiting for a command. And I looked at my sister because I was in the spirit. And I said, Deb, we got to let her go. I said, the death angels are here to escort her home to be with the Lord. I knew it was all right. How did you know? The spirit of God will give you confirmation and consolation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is this okay tonight? Church, I'm telling you, in spiritual warfare, you've got to know how to get in the spirit to do combat with the enemy. And the only way you're going to do it is not in the flesh. It's in the spirit realm. God bless you. Let's, let's pray in closing tonight. Amen. Father God, I thank you tonight for your holy word. I thank you, Lord, for the inspiration of your word, the anointing. And I praise you, almighty God, for the times that the Spirit of God, we allow you to, to intervene in our lives. Oh, God, help us to be men and women of prayer, to pray without ceasing, to pray continually, Lord, to pray one for another. Oh, God, help us to pray for our country, the leaders. Help us to pray for the peace of Israel, oh, God. And, Lord, when we know not how to pray, may we allow the Spirit of God to intercede in us, oh, Lord. Lord, with those groanings and utterances that we know not, we give you praise, glory, and all of the honor. And the church said, 
Amen and amen. God bless you. Come back on Sunday morning and be back with us in the house of the Lord. Invite somebody, amen, into the presence of the Lord. Shake hands and fellowship. Welcome in all of our visitors, amen.